what is going on guys and welcome in this video we're going to be creating a object from the array over here like this so let's say we have an array right but what we want is we want to create an object using the array reduce method right and it's also going to be counting the instances right so you can see over here if the peter is going to be three times also in our object is going to be three times right so the first thing that we would want to do is obviously create a array reduce method right so i'm going to use a variable and i'm going to call it count over here and i'm going to say that this is going to be a people right this is going to be the name of my array over here and i'm going to say that i would want a use a array method reduce and over here once we open up the over here a brackets right or here we have an option right we we need to pass a function right which could be unanimous function or we can just let's say in this case i'm just going to say that this is going to be a variable sort and after that we would need to place a initial value which is again we can write this value over here on its own right or we can create a variable right and in this case i'm just gonna first example i'm gonna do with actually creating a variables right and after that we're gonna place it as your anonymous function and just a starting value right so here we just close this one over here we just put a semicolon and over here what we would want to do is we would want to create those variables right so the first one is going to be a start value right and over here we're just going to write a start value and what is it going to be equal to right and in our case it's going to be actually equal to an empty object right because we're going to be creating an object that's what we're going to be doing and the next thing that we want to do is actually create this sort variable right and we're going to say that this is going to be a uh, sort is going to be equal to a function right over here like this and we're going to say that this function is going to actually uh, accept two parameters right and the first one we're going to call it a accumulator over here like this and the next one we're just going to say this is going to be next right now i need to tell you that right away we can name these parameters however we would want right this could this could be let's say beavis and butthead for all we care about right the most important is what they do right an accumulator is basically going to be our total and is going to start with our initial value over here with this one right and next is going to be pretty much the iteration through the array right so it's first is going to be peter then it's going to be john then Anne, and so on and so forth right so once we have our parameters over here like this we open up a curly brackets right because then we're going to be writing what the function is actually going to be doing and always whenever we are working with a reduce the first thing what we need to do is just just in case right away write return and we need to say that we would want to write uh return the accum accumulator right this is going to be our total right and again this could be named however you'd want just remember that you need to return this value over here right and after that once we have done that right we can just go over here and let's say i'm going to just prove it to you that let's say console right console log over here and i'm going to say that we would want to like let's say console log count right so i'm just going to save it we can refresh and you can see that we are actually returning the object right well just to prove to you that i'm not just making this up right let's just change the starting value right to a zero right and again we'll refresh and you can hit zero right and obviously when we're working with the reduce we can actually create a new array right so here we can also create a new array you can see it over here right now let's go back to our object and now that we know that we are actually working with object right we know that our accumulator is actually an object let's go and check it out how we can work with objects right so let's say that we have people's two object right so what is the way or let's say how what is the one of the ways how we can add values over here right so one of the ways of adding values we would write people to which would be the name of our object then we would over here would put a square brackets then we would create a value which is in this case i'm just going to call this gary right and i'm going to set it equal to i don't know like, let's say four right so just again just to double check that what we're doing is right right so let's go over here and i'm just going to copy this value and i'm going to paste it in this console log right so again we're just going to check it out what we have right and you can see that right now my 
people too right this is going to be my object has over here this uh, value uh, pair right which is going to be gary and over here it's going to be four right okay simple enough right so if we know that we over here have this accumulator right which is like an object right so we could probably do the same thing right so what do we do over here i would just write accumulator right and over here i would just make up something right so the first one i'm just gonna write let's say one right and i'm gonna say that this is gonna be equal to one right so i'm just gonna save it and run it again and obviously what you have over here is an object right which has over here this value key right key is one and over here the value is one right so again if we change it around and let's say over here i'm just gonna write let's say peter right the first one right over here i'm gonna write peter and i'm gonna set it something equal to two three right so again if we save it you can see over here that i'm starting to create an object right and over here the first key is going to be peter and the value is three well with that in mind right we can imagine that if we have over here this next right and the next is pretty much a uh, variable that that's going to be iterating through this array right so if we would place over here this next right it would be actually iterating through the array right that would make sense right so let's say that we're going to set this one equal to let's say one all right and we're going to save it and we're going to run it first time right and sure enough what's happening is right what we're doing is we're iterating through the array right so what we're saying is listen we want this peter right and you need to understand that over here this next already has these uh quotation marks right so right away you don't need to put them over here when when I, whenever you're using the next like you would be using with the gary right you right away have them over here because you have them in your array right so you have peter then you have john and Anne and bruce and jim right and what's happening is the reason why it's not counting right away the way it should be three two two one one right is because we we pretty much set it to a base value right we said that whenever is going to be it's going to be equal to one right so even if it starts iterating through the next peter it's still going to set it equal to one right so therefore it's always going to say to one right so what we would need to do right now is we would need to figure out a way for us to actually make sure that with our function that if we actually would check if we have already peter what we would want to do is add another peter right and another value add let's say two and then three right so how we would do that in a regular object right so if we go back over here and let's say that uh i would go to console log right and i would check that people too but let's say that i would call it trump right i would say trump and what i'm saying is listen console log tell me do i does the object over here has a key trump or it doesn't right so let's save this and you can see over here that it says trump in this object is actually undefined right okay well this actually gives us an idea right so if we just let's say use a if statement and what we're going to say is that listen if right this accumulator next right accumulator next over here is actually equal to undefined over here like this undefined right then what we would want to do is we would want to create this first accumulator right so we just put a curly brackets and we can just cut this one out right and paste it over here and what you see over here and this, this is going to be our code block right what we're saying is listen accumulator do you exist if you are undefined then let's create one and over here we're going to say else right because in some cases obviously it's going to be already there we're just going to add in a value and how do we add uh, a value right so the long version would be something like this right so we write accumulator next over here and then we say that this is going to be a equal to accumulator next plus one right over here like this right and we write this and we save it over here and refresh and sure enough we have we have over here a peter which is three this is going to be john two and and you know along those lines right 
now we pretty much solve our problem right however there's obviously always going to be a shorter version how to write this right so the first one we can start over here with the cells right what we can do is over here we can just delete this right and what we're saying is you know what just add one right so again if you iterate right you can see that it's still going to be the same thing because all we did is pretty much shorten over here right so we just said listen if it is a one already just add one more right now the next thing that we can actually check it out is how we can deal over here with this undefined right because it's pretty long right and one of the ways how we can do that right is we put if we put over here an exclamation mark over here like this right and what it does is pretty much says that this is going to be false right so what it's saying is that listen if accumulator right over here is false right then add one and again let's do it very easy let's just check it out how we can do that over here with a with a regular object right so you can see over here people to is trump right so let's say over here we go with a peter right so we go back to the same object and we're just going to check whether it's peter there right but we're, we'll, what we're going to do is we're just going to put an exclamation mark over here right and we'll just see what happens so if you refresh you can see that it's what it's saying is that it's false right what does mean false over here what i'm saying is that if peter doesn't exist right so let's say over here if i would put trump right over here back to trump the trump that doesn't exist it's going to return that it's true right so what it's saying is pretty much the opposite right so what i'm saying is that if right trump doesn't exist then do something right so in this case what i'm saying is that if it doesn't exist right if my accumulator doesn't exist right which in my first case is going to be peter then do something right otherwise do something here so it's pretty much a shorter version just by you by putting this exclamation mark you're just shortening your um your uh, code right and remember that basically how it worked is whenever we were setting the val variable equal to something right if we were saying something like this right we knew that th what it means is not equal to right let's say variable x right is not equal to let's say one or something like this right now i'm over exaggerating right now like oh, let's say right one equals to something like this right but what it means is not equal to right and over here what we can do is we can run it again and let's check it out right and it still works right so we added that exclamation mark and you can still see that our our code is running right now there's always still an even shorter version right so what we can do over here we can just write a accumulator right and we can write next and over here what we can say is this listen add accumulator next one more over here or we're just going to use this or statement or just add one right so again i'm just gonna refresh and don't forget to put a semicolon over here and you can see that if we run it over here and it still works right we still have a Peter 3, uh, John is going to be 2, and Anne, and Bruce, and Jim, right? And one more way how we could write this, right? We, if you don't like this way, right? If this is maybe confusing or something. So we're going to place a brackets, right? We're going to write accumulator. Over here, we're going to say next, right? And after that, we're going to say or. Over here like this. We're going to say or 0, right? Plus 1, right? So another way, what we're basically saying, a logic code, right? That if this has a value, right? Just add one. Or if it's zero, then add one, right? So pretty simple. Now, the last thing that I want to show you is obviously, like I said, we can actually place these values over here, right? So we can use this as an anonymous function, right? And we can right away put the starting value, right? And the reason for why we're doing over here, so it's obviously not this clogged up, right? So now we have a separate two variables, right? That actually are responsible, one for function, one for initial value, right? But we can place them over here, right? And it's still going to be valuable, right? So over here, if I place this one, right? And I'm just going to get rid of this variable. 
and over here I'm just going to place this function, right? And since it is unanimous function, right, I don't want this variable sort, right? So what I'm going to do, I'm just going to take this one out, right? But still, this function stays the same, right? So I'm just going to cut this one, and over here add as my first parameter, right? And again, we're just going to save it, and we run it again, and you can see that it's true, right? And this is a pretty basic way how we can use reduce uh, to actually get uh, a really nice uh, result, right? Because we can just pretty much, we don't need to do any kind of for loops, any kind of, uh, you know, uh, you, working with the keys, uh, let's say working with object keys or, or iterating through the object keys or nothing like that, right? We pretty much can uh, write in general one line of code, right? I mean, there's another ones that we're doing the setup, right? But the actual logic, you can see that it's very, very, very short. Right. So this is going to be it for this video, guys. I hope you didn't find it too long uh, and I'll see you in the next video.